Hello everyone, Marky Shaw back here for another Raspberry Pi synth project. The goal with today's project is to make a super cheap but powerful synthesizer that doesn't need a monitor, also known as a headless configuration. What better way to do this than to use a $10 Raspberry Pi 0W? This is going to make the Pi into a super easy single purpose synth device with the ability to reprogram it whenever you want. Here's what you're going to need to get started. A Raspberry Pi Zero, Zero W, or the WH, which comes with the pre-soldered GPIO pins. That might come in handy later if you want to hook up a power switch. A micro SD card with Raspbian Stretch loaded on it. A 5 volt 2000 milliamp power brick and a micro USB cable. I'll go into more details about that later. A USB hub like the 4 port one that I received from Adafruit. I definitely recommend that particular one. It works great. A Sobrant USB audio adapter which I bought from Amazon for $6.99. I showcased that in one of my previous videos. So check that out if you want to see how well it performs with the Raspberry Pi in general. And of course a MIDI keyboard with knobs or sliders. You're going to need those for adjusting the parameters that you want to configure later. I'm using the Akai MPK Mini. And lastly a mini HDMI adapter, monitor and keyboard and the mouse as well just to get everything set up for the first time. Before we get started, this is a quick summary of what you'll need to do. Once Raspbian is loaded on an SD card and you're ready to boot it up, you'll start off by disabling the onboard audio in Raspbian and set up the jack audio options much like in my previous videos. Then you'll need to download the latest version of Sunvox. The latest version did have some major performance issues with both the Pi Zero and even the Pi 3 and I'll address all of that later so definitely stay tuned. We'll then set up the MIDI connection from Sunvox to Jack and we'll create a template for the modules and effects that you want to use. Then we're going to need to tweak some of those Sunvox settings to use our new template and change some of the graphics options as well. And then we're going to change the LXDE auto start settings to load Sunvox automatically when the Pi boots up. And lastly, we'll unplug the monitor, keyboard and mouse to test and see if it's truly headless. Let's dive right in. First I wanted to show you these three random power bricks that I had laying around. If you try to use a thousand milliamp brick for this project, you're most likely going to run into issues with the Pi even being able to boot because there's not enough power for the keyboard, USB audio adapter, and a MIDI device. Just carefully inspect your power brick to make sure it's rated for 2000 milliamps like this one right here. Once Raspbian is booted, and as I've shown you guys in the past, the first thing you're going to want to do is disable the onboard audio. Edit the boot slash config.txt file and comment out this DT param line at the end of the file. Then run QJackCTL as we've seen before, and under setup, We'll set our usual 48,000 Hz, and this time we'll use a higher frame setting at 512 to account for the Pi Zero's slower processor. And use the HW device in the interface section, not the one with the zero in parentheses, because that's for the mic input on the USB audio adapter. Now we'll exit Jack and go ahead and start up Sunvox. You'll notice that the first time you run the latest version of Sunvox, which by the time I'm filming this is 1.9.3b, that it will take forever to load. But don't panic. Due to recent changes in Sunvox's implementation of libSDL, it has caused major performance issues on all Raspberry Pi models, including the Pi 3. Go ahead and let Sunvox load completely. And once it's fully loaded, just close out of Sunvox altogether. By doing this, Sunvox will create a config file that you can edit to change a variety of options. And a big shout out to fellow YouTuber Leon Trimble for bringing this to my attention, and Night Radio from the Sunvox forums for helping out with this. All we have to do is go in the .config subdirectory that resides in your home directory. Then go to Sunvox and edit the sunvox underscore config dot ini file. At the very end, simply add the line soft render. That will fix the performance issues. 
Secondly, you can change the audio driver to jack and add those MIDI underscore KBD lines as well. Or you can set those audio options in the GUI later. Now we will run Sunvox. Once it loads, run QJack CTL one more time to connect in your MIDI device. Under the MIDI tab, expand System, select MIDI Capture, and then on the right, expand Sunvox and select Keyboard 1, then click Connect. Close out of Jack, and now we can start making our Sunvox template. As you might be aware, Sunvox has a default template that has a bunch of different modules and effects preloaded in it. I want to start with a totally blank canvas, so I'm going to delete everything except for the output. Then I will right click, select new to add a new module and select the analog generator. Just to help with the volume, I'll add a compressor module in there too. We'll test this out first and then try out some effects later. Click on Analog Generator first, hold the Shift key, then click Compressor and Output to connect them in order. Okay, I think we're just about ready. Let's give it a try. Now I want to be able to use one of the knobs on my MIDI keyboard to select a different synth waveform like the triangle, square, sawtooth, etc. Select the analog generator, right click the waveform attribute, click the little dots in the MIDI in section, and then move the knob itself. You can see that it cycles through the different waveforms no problem. Sounding good so far, let's map the release attribute to my second knob to give us some real synth options. We'll do the same thing for frequency 2 to simulate a second oscillator on knob number 3. The last module we'll add to our template will be the vibrato effect. First we'll need to select our compressor and click the unlink button and select the analog generator. Then reconnect all the modules together again. 
The vibrato effect has some cool attributes similar to what you'd find on a real synth, such as adjusting the amplitude and frequency modulation. I'll map those two controls together and play around with it for a bit. Let's go ahead and map the amplitude option first. And then we'll set the frequency option as well. Since this little Pi Zero isn't super fast, it's definitely recommended to make some small tweaks to enhance the performance of Sunvox, like changing the window size. Since the end result will be a headless system, we won't need to worry about seeing anything on the screen. Again, thanks to Leon Trimble for this cool tip. So now we've made the Sunvox window as small as possible. I know it might look a little strange, but if for any reason you need to go back into Sunvox and make some changes, uh, the first thing you need to do is just edit that config file for Sunvox like I showed you previously. And it's just a matter of changing that 10 by 10 pixel ratio to something else. Uh, like 800 by 600 works perfectly fine. You can get back in the software and make further adjustments. All right, we'll load Sunvox one more time, and there's just a couple more options we need to configure in here. The first being the automatic session restore. Let's go ahead and enable that. Since we're using a headless system, we don't want anything to prompt us before Sunvox loads. Then we'll go ahead and save our template that we've been working on. I'll just call it something like main. Alright, now that we have the template saved, we can go ahead and set the starting template back in the main options again. And this will load everything we just created automatically every time Sunvox starts. Alright, I know we've come a long way to get to this point, but we have one last final thing that we need to do, which is edit the auto start file for the LXDE XORG environment. Uh, I did this in another video as well, so you might be familiar with this process, uh, but here's where you need to go. It's in the .config directory, that's a part of your home directory, under the LX session subdirectory. LXDE hyphen pi, and there you can edit the auto start file. Now, in an effort to get this thing to boot as quickly as possible, I'm going to comment out all these other programs that load when LXDE starts. That means things like the menu will not load at all when this thing boots up. I'm going to add in the direct path to the Sunvox binary executable file, and that's it. Uh, if you need to make a change to this in the future, you can just edit the file again and get back into your desktop environment, no problem. Okay, so I lied. There is one more step you have to do, which is to run sudo raspi-config and go under the boot options to select the desktop auto login desktop GUI automatically logged in as the Pi user. Uh, you do not want to require the user to log in because you're not going to have a keyboard hooked up to this thing. Uh, so choose that option in there. You just want to make sure that's all set. You might already have it set anyway, but just double check to be on the safe side. Now let's go ahead and reboot this thing and test it out. 
So as you can see, the LXDE desktop environment loads with absolutely nothing, no panels, no menus, just a black screen, and there's the little Sunvox window running in the middle there, only 10 by 10 pixels, and what we're going to do at this point in time is drop out to the console real quick by hitting Control alt f one we're going to run the awesome mixer command to boost up the main volume pretty much as loud as you want. Um, I think I put mine all the way up at the top. Uh, seems to work out pretty well for me. Uh, but after that, you can go ahead and reboot this thing, and it should work perfectly fine now as a standalone, single-purpose synthesizer. Let's give it a shot. I went ahead and unplugged the power. We're going to say goodbye to this little keyboard and mouse receiver, and we're also going to say goodbye to this monitor cable. I went ahead and timed the whole boot up process, and it took around 30 seconds or so. I went ahead and speeded this up for our demonstration purposes today, but as you can see, everything's working just fine. All right, guys, well, it looks like we have ourselves here a completely headless Raspberry Pi Zero synthesizer set up fairly simply. It's not perfect by any means, and there's a couple other optimizations to think about for a future project. I was thinking that like a LED indicator light to let you know that the synth is fully booted up and ready to go. Um, I also thought that you could get this thing to boot up a lot faster if Xorg and LXDE was just out of the picture completely. Because theoretically, Sunvox works right in the Linux console thanks to LibSDL. But I've had some troubles with that too along the way. Uh, but I'll again try that out another day. Another option, of course, is to compile a new Linux kernel with RT support, as I've shown in a previous video. It would just take forever on a Pi Zero uh, without cross-compiling. And maybe just to add a little bit more functionality, I think it'd be cool to have another MIDI controller like this one right here. This is a Korg Nano controller. I think I got this thing for free as a gift from Musician's Friend one day. They're super cheap, but as you can see with all these knobs and sliders, you could adjust just about anything in Sunvox and have a very versatile and powerful synthesizer. And lastly, if you wanted to take this to a band rehearsal or a studio session, I was thinking maybe just put some double-sided tape or Velcro the Pi and the USB hub directly to your MIDI controller, and it would probably work out just fine. All right, guys. Well, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been informative. If you like what you see, hook me up with a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll be putting out a lot of other technology and music-related videos here in the future. I got some cool singles out on Spotify, Google Play, and iTunes. I'll have some information down in the description below, as well as some links to the products that I used in this particular video. Visit again soon, and have a wonderful day.